with CDIY and today I'm going to be talking about an open source hardware kit called the OK Synth. Uh, now as you know I really like kits and I also love music kits so this when I saw this uh, available for purchase from Oscatone I, I knew I wanted to build one immediately. Uh, so it comes in two flavors. Uh, it comes in a fully assembled one so like it just comes in the mail like this and they act, uh, he actually, I think, will do custom colors for you. Uh, there's also one where you get the electronics kit and the 3D printed parts, uh, in case you don't have a 3D printer or you don't want to print it. Or there's the BYOP version, bring your own printer, uh, which is what I did, which basically like you get the electronic kit portion uh, and then you download the files on Thingiverse and print everything out yourself, uh, which, as you can see, I did, and I chose a nice obnoxious color scheme. and. Here we are. I apparently really like pink and yellow because um, there's also the arcade box that I built. I used pink and yellow duct tape and I've got some pink and yellow guitar cables too that I've wrapped in duct tape as well. Uh, anyway, but yeah, let's talk about the process of the build. Uh, so first I started out, I think a lot of people start out this way, um, printing all the parts, getting that all sorted out. And uh, I have to say I was really impressed with the level of documentation for the prints on Thingiverse. Um, he has all of the settings listed out that you'll need, like what percent infill for each part, whether you need supports or not. And then another thing, you'll probably notice there is some black filament on here that is like a part of the print. And obviously I don't have a dual extrusion printer. How do I achieve that? He actually tells you exactly which layer height you're gonna need to change colors at, and then you can edit your G-code using um, whatever software you prefer for that to enter in when you want the printer to stop so that you can uh, throw in a filament change and go from there. So you do that with the keyboard portion, the OK, uh, and then the Oscatone logo on the speaker grill, uh, the knobs, and then also on the OK and volume uh, labels. So 
pretty cool. So I did that. Uh, the prints went really well. Uh, I was really impressed with the detail on the prints as well, especially in the body. Uh, like the, the different standoffs for all the circuit boards and also the, even the placeholder for the 9 volt battery. Really nice design and also like the hinges and everything and the, the snaps. I really liked it. Um, so it's overall really nice design, uh, really nice files. Everything fits really well. So if your printer's calibrated properly, like you'll have no issues printing this out. You don't have to worry about it, which is nice. Uh, then the electronics. Uh, portion. Everything's pretty straightforward. It comes with four PCBs. There's a little baggie for each portion of the electronics build that has all the parts similar to how like Lego does their kits now. Uh, the kids today will never understand the trials and tribulations of just having bags sorted by part size and having a giant Lego kit in front of you and having to dig through to get that one piece you need. Kids today. Uh, one thing, the kit comes with a lovely printed instruction manual. Now it's also available online as a PDF, that's more your flavor, but I was impressed that this was included. Like you don't really see these today in the digital world, so I was impressed with that. And also that's like an extra expense and time on his part that he has to make this, because this is a definite like DIY operation. So you have the, the Thingiverse settings for the print in here as well, um, in case you don't want to keep referencing Thingiverse. Uh, and then of course, how to assemble all the electronics. Uh, now just one thing I'll say, about the electronic assembly, keeping in mind that in the grand scheme of things, I'm still not that experienced. Um, I wish the electronics had had just a, a tiny bit more detail, uh, especially the bus board, which is where all the power gets sent to all the boards. Uh, I just thought there could have been a little bit more detail in describing how to hook everything up. And I'd also like to see some pictures of the boards completed uh, on the site. Not in here, obviously, because that would be like way too much ink. I would like to see some like up close pictures of each board assembled only because I'm a very visual person. That's kind of how I am. And I think it would be helpful uh, in connection with the instructions. Obviously I was able to assemble it properly, uh, but it did slow me down a bit just trying to figure that out. And since I believe this kit is it's not really aimed at any skill level, it's kind of for everyone. I, I think that that would really kind of kick it up a notch, uh, as far, <laughs> notch as far as the assembly instructions go. Uh, but once you have your soldering all set and your kit is ready to rock and you've tested everything, then it's time to put it all together. And that part is very simple. You just screw in the PCBs to the standoffs in the inside of the case. Uh, you attach the hinges uh, to the top and the bottom. You pop these in and everything and you're basically good to go. So let's talk about this as a synth. How's it hold up? It is an all analog. So there's no microcontroller in here, which is awesome. I love that. Uh, and it's monophonic. Now for those that aren't music nerds or synth nerds, monophonic means that one note is played at a time. So if you notice, I'm going to hold down, I'm going to turn down the volume and I'm going to hold down C. And now I'm going to press G. So you notice only one note comes through at a time. Uh, when multiple notes can be struck, aka to make chords, uh, that's called polyphonic, uh, but it's monophonic, so it's only one. But I like monophonic since actually when I'm using Reason and programming, I often use monophonic since because I like the effects you can get. I like that you can do things like... I like that kind of thing, uh, so... Monophonics five of me. Some people might not like it, but there it is. And um, don't let the one octave scare you, because uh, there is the the octave pitch. And when you're wiring up the rotary switch, you actually choose which six octaves you want to select. So you can choose a different combination of things. So you do have that octave selector to give you some more range. So yeah, as a synth, I think it's really fun. I've enjoyed playing with it. Uh, I actually, after I finished assembling it, I, I kind of got lost for about 30 minutes just playing around and riffing around on it. Uh, the one thing that I do wish it had was a quarter inch jack out. So then you could use it with effects pedals and amps and stuff. But I have exciting news. Uh, literally, as I was about to film this, he and Oscatone announced that they have the OK Synth 2, which is 
two octaves. Have all 12 octaves selected with the rotary switch. It still has a speaker out, but it's also going to include a quarter inch output as well with a switch that you can switch between that disables whichever one you don't want to use, which is awesome. Of course, this also means I'm gonna have to build another synth like right now. Uh, you could, I think, mod this to have a quarter inch out. And I had talked about wanting to do that actually to someone after I had finished building it. I might still do that, maybe. I don't know. But where it's available stock now, I might just do that in a, in a while, in a while, you know. And of course, power you turn on with the volume knob. You get a nice click and there's a nice LED to let you know if power is on. Um, and the whole thing's powered by a nine volt battery that sits nicely inside the synth. And you can get access to the insides fairly easily with these hinges right here. So yeah, overall, I think the OK Synth is a fun little kit. I've had fun with it. It was a really fun build. Uh, if you're kind of new to 3D printing, also it's good experience to kind of print all these parts and have them fit together and everything. Uh, so that's also good. Uh, I, I also just kind of like what Osgatone's doing in general. The fact that it's all analog in this world of microcontrollers and everything. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people assume it's going to be running in Arduino and it isn't, it's all analog. Uh, so I respect that. I really like that. Uh, I think it's a good price. Uh, and I, I like the open source DIY aesthetic that it is offering up. Uh, so yeah, overall, I'm a fan. And if you're, if you think it's also cool or if you think it should be different, or if you're interested in the new version that was literally just announced, uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. Again, leave me questions, comments down below. Uh, find me on social media, links are down in the description. You can look back and see the build process. I was trying to post videos of most of the, the prints printing. Um, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.